Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Ally interview with the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. I am Stephen Bashong. In honor of Young Survivors Week, we wanted to do something a little different this time. So I'm conducting my first ever uh, panel video interview. We'll see how it goes. I am honored to be joined today by three young patients and survivors who are not only amazing advocates with the Alliance, but truly incredible people too. Kevin Hayes, Michelle Kappel, and Courtney Forger. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Happy to be here. You bet. Um, before we get started, I want to note um, to the viewers that you can learn more about each of our guest stories in the links below uh, this video. Uh, so I have a few questions. Uh, to get to that I hope will help those recently diagnosed or struggling with this disease. Uh, but first, and I'd like to start with Courtney, in a word, how would you describe the impact of COVID-19 on your life? And has there been one thing that you couldn't do without during this time? It's been hard. I'm a very social person. I'm type A. I want to be around people and do fun things but my safety and my family's safety is number one and everyone else's safety. It's, it's the most responsible thing. And I don't want to put my life or anyone else's life in danger. So the thing that's gotten me through this, honestly, it's the uh, ally social hour every Friday night at seven o'clock at Blue Hope Nation. I get really excited about it. There's always a theme. I do my hair and my makeup and I have something to look forward to. If, even if I'm having a really it's kind of depressing week or I'm just not feeling good and just kind of funky and just mm. I know Friday night I have something to do I'm going to be with my old friends I'm going to make new friends and it's it's what I look forward to every week it helps. Courtney how does somebody find that chat if they would want to join themselves? Every week it's posted on Blue Hope Nation usually uh, Wednesday afternoon and then again Friday and there's always a link and there's always a ton of people there and you'll always have a great time. Great thank you. Mm -hmm. Michelle? So um, a word I would say would maybe whirlwind. So my life was kind of just turned upside down rather quickly. Um, I am a teacher, so I had to switch gears really, really quickly and learn how to teach on a computer and do that engagingly so that my kids still came to class, which didn't always happen. I tried my best. Um, but yeah, so it's just a whirlwind. Everything's just been crazy. So, um, but the big thing for me was that I was really, really, my heart hurt for the people that were recently diagnosed and just started to go through treatment and having to do treatment on their own. So the one thing that I definitely can't live without during this time is technology because that has, one, it's allowed me to keep my job and two, um, Myself and three other people from Never Too Young have been trying to reach out to people that we have seen on Blue Hope Nation that are new, that are scared, that are doing treatments on their own or have a lot of questions. So we've been reaching out to them. We've been doing some Zoom calls with them so that people don't feel so alone right now. Um, it's, it's just been really great. I mean, we've been t talking to people. We've got a girl in Malaysia. We've got someone in the UK we've been talking with. So just to be able to make those connections and make people feel like they're not alone in this um, be because they were just, you know, just reading all the questions that they had. I'm like, you know, this is a scary thing to start. Throw COVID-19 on top of it, a cancer diagnosis, and you're really alone. So, um, the technology piece has been really important to help people. That's so great to hear, Michelle. I'm glad you could be there for them. Kevin, what about you? Um, my word that I use to describe the impact of COVID is paused. Um, much of life is on hold right now. Um, I found good and bad in it. Um, I've had more time to focus on what's important. I've got a wife and three small kids and getting to spend more time uh, this day to day with them has, has been a positive, but there's also bad. I mean, it's, it's a difficult time. It's trying mentally and uh, uh, both personally and some other people I know, uh, clinical trials are suspended. Um, I'm a stage four patient. I'm always looking for the, the next thing. And uh, uh, there's a clinical trial I'm, I'm looking into, but 
they they won't even work on intake right now because everything's paused because of COVID. So that's a little trying uh, mentally. It's a s stressful thing uh, on top of everything else that's paused with COVID. The one thing that I can do without this time is support. I'm largely echoing uh, what Courtney and Michelle said. Um, we we need support. Uh, we need to support each other to get through this. Um, I've, I've used technology for chats like this and uh, whether it's advocacy or just talking to somebody that really understands what um, what this this kind of uh, life and situation uh, presents um, it's it's been very helpful to be able to have that connection um, we're, we're connected across the country sometimes across the world with uh, people that we wouldn't have otherwise met um, that can really lend a hand uh, in this time. Yeah, if there's one thing the Alliance knows, it's that community is absolutely essential as you're fighting this disease. I think we might get more to that with the next question. You guys all have amazing stories. Like I said, viewers, you can learn more about each of these guys in the links below. Um, but I'd like to narrow this question to one focus, and that's what was it in your life that's helped you survive colorectal cancer? The one thing I think was humor. I wanted everyone else to stay positive. I, it was scary, but honestly, you know, having people come up and say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And that pity, I want to surround myself with light and humor. And if I was positive and joking, then that made everyone else more comfortable. And that made it a better experience. I still went through chemo and radiation and a ton of surgeries, but if I could keep laughing and make everyone else laugh, it was much more comfortable for me. And that kept me going. Michelle, what about you? So I would say the support of family and friends. Um, I'm single, so, um, and I am away from all my family. So my family would come and visit me and so would my best friend. So they would take turns taking me to treatment. So the support of people that I loved and then um, my faith was also very, very important when I um, got diagnosed, I dug, dug down deep. Um, I was always religious, but that was the one time I said, you know what, I need to make this through this. And with his help, I'm gonna pull through this. And I made sure that I said to God that I wanted him to be present at the hospital with me every day. And I wanted some, I wanted some affirmation of that. I wanted to know that he was there so even in just the littlest things and the conversations, I would see God in um, jewelry of the nurses. I would see God and we would have these conversations that just brought tears to my eyes. So little God winks that I had during my treatment meant, meant the world to me and helped me get through it. Extremely powerful point. What about you, Kevin? Um, again, I'd say my support network. Um, and that can mean a lot of things to one thing I'd say specifically towards this is um, a really good relationship with my medical team. Um, I, I've built some personal relationships with uh, some of the members of my medical team. Uh, and I know that the team cares. They've gone out of their way to help me in the past. Um, not just another number. And it makes a big difference having a relationship uh, built on trust instead of just a transactional, you're going into the doctor and you're, you're checking the boxes and going through there. So uh, the really strong relationship with my medical team has helped get me through. And honestly, I think it's, it's literally helped uh, save my life. Um, I don't think I'd be here without uh, that kind of relationship if I was just going through this as, um, as going through the motions. Um, and then I'd also uh, echo Courtney uh, humor doesn't work for everybody, but it's a good defense mechanism for me. Uh, my maturity level hasn't really uh, surpassed the fourth grade. And with colorectal cancer, um, getting to tell a lot of uh, poop jokes and butt jokes, um, I now have an excuse. There you have it. I, I do want to follow up on the first part of your answer, though, Kevin. How, just, you know, in short, how did you build those very strong, trusting relationships with your medical team? Because I think that's so important. 
it happened really organically. Um, it, and I think a, a big part of it was how I put myself out there. Um, instead of just going in uh, to clinic and for uh, just listening to the, the standard diagnosis and what we're planning on with treatment, um, I opened up about myself. Uh, I, I talked about myself, my family, uh, who I am, uh, what I'm concerned about and what I'm passionate about. Um, and I just uh, helped create uh, more of an identity uh, as opposed to a patient number with my medical team. And they, they responded really well and they opened up the same way. And just uh, treating people like people as opposed to their profession um, can go a really long way. And we've, we've built some really strong uh, lasting relationships. Um, and I couldn't be more thankful for that. Yeah, it sounds like a doctor oncologist might see you sitting in the chair, but really they need to get to know you and you should strive to share enough about yourself that they care about you, Kevin Hayes, the person, right? Yeah. Um, so what is the importance of the Colorectal Cancer Alliance in your battle to end this disease? And we should switch it up. Maybe, maybe we start with Michelle for this one. So the Alliance is super important to me. They, you know, get the word out there about the young survivors and how that the, you know, early detection, screening, all those things are really, really important to get out there. And, you know, people look at us and they don't see stage four cancer. You know, they don't see stage three cancer. We're not the face of what you would think it is. So the Alliance has given us a voice and has, you know, put it out there, you know, because people just don't know. They have really no clue at all that it's on the rise in young people, but for the elderly population, it's going down. So why is that happening? So the Alliance has done a great job with, you know, getting that word out there, spreading that word to other people, spreading that word to even to the doctors. I mean, you know, I mean, we've got so many people that have gone misdiagnosed and so just all of that information that the Alliance has been providing for people is just a really, really powerful piece for us. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that that lack of awareness is dangerous because people don't, might not know why they're having the symptoms they're having. And while you know, most doctors are very well intentioned, they might not know either. Um, so knowing those symptoms and being able to advocate for yourself is, is really life-saving. Um, Kevin, did you want to go next? Sure. Um, the Alliance has given me an outlet uh, and, uh, to focus on advocacy. Um, my personal um, mindset is uh, aligns with the whole fighting against cancer and battle and not everybody responds uh to that language i do but i don't feel like i'm fighting a battle when i'm sitting in a, a chemo chair and advocacy is my way to fight back so it gives me a real sense of purpose which is something that i need to to keep going on um it's also connected me to uh, what we say my people um i mean courtney and michelle that they're my people, uh, like other people on the on the Never Too Young Advisory Board. Uh, we we share a tremendous amount with one another, and uh, it's helpful. Also, going to AlliCon. Um, I mean, just getting to spend time uh, with people uh, that they understand, and most importantly, they empathize with our journey. Um, it allows for connection, conversation advice and support in a way uh, even the most well-intentioned third party can't match. And it's, um, it's definitely been something that's helped me along. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, what would you say, Courtney? I would say people were so kind and generous to me when I was going through treatment. I'm gonna start crying. 
that I promised myself for the rest of my life that I'm going to give back. And the Alliance have, has given me a platform to shout from the rooftops about advocacy and getting checked. And to jump on Kevin's statement, it's it's been amazing making those connections and the Alliance we've had opportunities to spread the message with thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people of ask questions, find out your family history, know those things. If you have symptoms, go check it out. And the misdiagnosis, I, if my d concerns were taken seriously, when I started to bring them up, I might be stage one. Finally, I got answers at stage 30C. And the Alliance is just so great about having those conversations and I just love being a part of it. Thank you, Courtney. Um, and finally, for all of the allies out there who might be watching, uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received about dealing with a colorectal cancer diagnosis? And since Kevin hasn't gone first yet, take it away. I knew I was going to get pegged. Um, so, uh, Another Stephen at the Alliance, uh, Stephen Estrada, um, he, he probably can put it more eloquently uh, than I can, but I heard him speak once, um, and heard him speak many times, but uh, the first time I heard him speak, and he was talking about how uh, you're the coach of your medical team, and you want to trust your quarterback and your players, but remember that you're in charge, and you're leading the way, and that really resounded with me. Um, a lot of people don't even realize they can they don't want to challenge their doctor because they are the expert. But, um, I mean, the, the Alliance community has given me a ton of um, anecdotal and experience-based uh, uh, experience um, that I've been able to take and bring to my medical team. And because I have that uh, trustworthy relationship, we can have an open dialogue about um, I heard about this and uh, could this potentially work for me? And, and we work on my treatment plan uh, based on that. Um, and a close second is really related. Uh, take advice under consideration, uh, but do what feels right to you. Our journeys are similar, uh, but they're all a little bit different and we're all different people. So we should trust um, that we understand ourselves and our needs uh, the best and um, just trust in yourself. I think Steven Estrada would be proud. Thank you, Kevin. Let's do uh, Michelle. So some of what Kevin said I was going to say just about being your own advocate and speaking out. So he's hit the nail on the head with that one for sure. Um, I, I talk to people about that all the time. You know, use your voice, use it loud and proud and speak up for yourself because no one's gonna do it for you. Um, but the other thing for me is being stage four diagnosis. Um, stage four, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a death sentence. And so many people, when they get that stage four diagnosis, they go to the internet, they look up the, the statistics and they're not us, they are not us. I tell that to people all the time that it's not us we are not included in that. Just, you know what, everyone's journey is different. And there are so many of us that are beating this disease, that are living long, healthy lives, are having families, and are here years and years and years down the road to share their stories with people. And so, you know, some doctors scare people. And, you know, sometimes people get scared about what they read. And I said, you know, stay away from that. It's not always the best sentence. You know, we're, we're doing great things and we're, we're moving in the right direction and this, and this disease. Michelle, you're so right. And for the other nerds out there, just remember what uh, Han Solo said to Chewy. Don't tell me the odds. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Don't tell me the odds. There you have it. And then, uh, Courtney, you'll have our final word. The best piece of advice is hard because I didn't have any advice. I was the youngest person in my chemo center by about 20, 25 years, and not a single person had colorectal cancer. And I was floating on my own until I had the Alliance. So I didn't receive any advice, but I want to give advice. And my piece is to make those connections. You don't need to float alone in the world and figure out how to deal with blood cancer and ostomies and all this 
wonderful and terrible things and it's big scary world out there and if you join blue hope nation like i did there's eleven thousand members in there who have the exact same story of all age groups and they can really help and it just it takes you off that island and i that's the best piece of advice is just make those connections and uh for the benefit of everyone watching blue hope nation is a private facebook support community that you can find by searching Blue Hope Nation in the Facebook search bar. Um, you'll have to answer a couple questions in order to be admitted, um, but it's really a safe space uh, for colorectal cancer patients, survivors, caregivers, and their allies. So thank you for, for mentioning that a couple of times, Courtney. Really and I wanna thank, awesome. what's that? It's really important to me. Um, it's, it's helped me throughout all of my treatment. Good, good. Um, once again, thank you, Kevin, Michelle, and Courtney for being here today and sharing all of this great insight with uh, your fellow allies. We really appreciate you. Well, thank you for having us. Thanks for having us.